Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our prosthodontic series. This will be the last video in the series, and we'll be talking about lab processing of crowns. So let's set the scene. We took a final impression of the crown prep, poured it in dental stone, and then we have a master cast, which is a replica of the whole dental arch, or maybe just the quadrant we're working on. Then we make what's called a die for the tooth receiving the crown. And the die refers to this positive reproduction of the prepared tooth. Now with the die, we have two processes that need to take place. Ditching a die exposes the margin of the prep. And ditching a die basically involves scraping and cleaning away any stone below the margin so that it's clearly visible. And this margin is clearly visible 360 degrees around the prepared tooth. And so we remove any excess stone that could be obfuscating that margin. The second process is painting on what's called die spacer to allow room for cement. And that's shown in the bottom right picture. Die spacer is this thin painted on material that accounts for the cement layer. And we want a thin film thickness of cement between the intaglio surface of the crown and the prepared tooth. And this creates that minuscule amount of space that we need. So I think it's very helpful to talk about positive and negative reproductions with the lab processing portion. So you start with an object that you want to reproduce, like the crown of a tooth in this case. What you'll need to do is to take a mold or an imprint of it, which we call a negative reproduction. In the dental world, we would make an impression, which is a negative imprint of the teeth and soft tissues. And then from this mold, a positive reproduction can be made in the form of a cast or a model. And the positive is a, an exact replica or close to it of the original object and the negative is a template for that object. So when I go through the steps of lab processing, I want you to think in terms of positive and negative reproductions and what each step constitutes, because we'll basically be going from this to this to this. All right, so step one after making the die and ditching it, painting on the die spacer, is going to be waxing. And waxing involves making a positive of the object that you eventually want to make. And so essentially we're building the crown on the die out of wax. And wax is a great material because it can be easily manipulated with hot and cold instruments and it keeps its form when you're done. Waxing teeth is often one of the first things dental students will do in the sim lab. And it's often dreaded at first and very frustrating, but it can become quite enjoyable and even relaxing after some practice. So this is an absolutely gorgeous wax up of tooth number 14. Now wax isn't perfect though, and it builds up internal stress as it's manipulated, and these stresses will relax over time, causing distortion in shape and contour. So now we have a positive for our crown. The second step is sprueing, and this involves making a path with wax for the metal to go into the prosthesis as it's being created. And so this is a pile of wax sprues, they're pre-made, and you want to attach the sprue to a base and then attach it to the crown in the area of biggest bulk. So this is being attached to the thickest point of that wax up, usually at a cusp or incisal edge. The third step is investing. And this is where we make a negative by covering that wax and the sprue with investment material. And the same process is done for making dentures. And these investments are critical to know for the board exam, and you'll very likely get a question on this. And I have a quick, easy way to remember these. So a gypsum bonded investment will be used for making gold crowns. And you just have to remember G and G. Phosphate bonded investments are used for the fabrication of PFM crowns, and you just have to remember P and P. And lastly, silica bonded investments are used for base metal crowns. 
and base metal being the only one up here that contains an S, you match that up with the S of silica. So those three things, definitely remember that for the board exam. Nice and easy to memorize, an easy question there. All right, step four is called burnout, and this is where we melt out the wax positive to leave room for the metal to take its place. So you're essentially left with a void in the investment material where the waxed up crown was and where the sprue was. Step number five is called casting, and this is where we melt metal into the investment. So that sprue left a path for the metal to flow into, and we melt metal where the void was. And now step six is recovery. So we retrieve the cast framework by breaking open that investment. And here is our positive reproduction. Instead of wax, now it's made in gold. And finally, step seven is called quenching. And this is where the very hot cast metal is immediately placed in cool water to make it more malleable for finishing. And this involves removing the sprue, polishing, and finally delivering the crown to the patient. So this is a great summary slide. I really like this picture because it shows all of the steps and clearly labels all the portions of the diagram. So we started with a wax pattern on the die, we added the sprue to it, we covered it with an investment material, we melted out the wax in the sprue, we poured in cast metal material, broke open the investment, and finally removed the sprue, polished the crown, and delivered it to the patient. And everything's really nice and color-coded. The blue color is for the wax, this purple black is for the sprue wax, the gray is for the investment, the white symbolizes the void in the investment, and the gold shows the gold medal. So this is a great uh, picture to study to help summarize everything that we talked about. And just important to note, there are some dimensional changes through all these steps. There's some shrinkage and expansion, but they sort of even each other out over this process and it's very minimal, especially for a gold crown. The amount of shrinkage and expansion is very minimal. And finally, let's talk about porosity issues related to errors during lab processing. And there's some really good boards questions here as well. Porosity of porcelain is due to inadequate conden condensing of the porcelain. Porosity of acrylic is related to too fast heating, and this is, we're talking about dentures here. Shrinkage porosity of the metal is due to the sprue being too thin, and this prevents molten metal from flowing efficiently and effectively into the mold. And back pressure porosity of the metal is due to the sprue being too short, and this prevents venting of gas, and that means that gas was still present in the area, prohibiting fluid from flowing in. So there are two different types of porosity, which can be a little bit confusing. The shrinkage form is due to the sprue being too thin. The back pressure form is due to it being too short. And that's definitely important to remember for the board exam because it can be easily confused just with a couple words being different. All right, so congratulations, you made it to the end of the prosthodontic series. I know there is a lot of material and a lot of high yield facts to help you do well on the board exam. So next I'll work on a video with practice questions, testing all the concepts I went over in this lecture series. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out my Patreon page. A huge thank you to Michael Raja and all of my patrons for their support. You can unlock things like access to my video slides if you want to take notes on them, and exclusive practice questions, so go check that out if you're interested. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone, I'll see you all in the next video.